welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video or tutorial is most likely one of my favorite videos to date because I think it really shows how much I've grown as a sewer, sewist, DIY, a person who sews. So essentially I've got a wedding that I'm preparing for and I'm making two outfits because the wedding has two different events. I'm making an outfit for the traditional Nigerian wedding and I'm making another outfit for the white Christian you know black tie event for the following day. And this video is a tutorial for how I made the first dress, the one for the traditional wedding, and the tutorial for the second dress will follow up next week. So on that note, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. So out the vibe see if you like what's going on here you know join the club and let me know what you think in the comments okay so let's make this dress first let's talk execution so I had to do a little research to decide on what I wanted and it took a while it took a couple of days for me to search but I ended up with a design that was a combo of a lot of things that I had seen after all my browsing and procrastinating I eventually decided on a dress with a strapless bustier top and a side slit mermaid skirt so for the top I decided to use the Rose Cafe bustier pattern by Daria pattern making I will leave a link to her pattern in the description box I purchased her pattern but I decided to make the bustier for this dress in a size smaller than my actual size because I wanted it to tie at the back and not zip so I wanted something that would be a little smaller not at the cup but like with the main body and I love this pattern because it comes with a very detailed tutorial on how to use it and I will also leave a link to that below as well I suggest practicing on this pattern first that's what I did I practiced on an outfit weeks before I actually made this outfit or the bottom part of my dress you can either use the bottom part of the rose cafe bustier pattern or I also have like a basic skirt pattern on my channel that you can use if you don't want to use um, that pattern And then I followed the sketch that I found on Pinterest and used that to extend the bottom of my basic skirt pattern to form the mermaid pattern. It took like a little bit of finessing, but I finally got it right. So I will leave a link in the description box and on my blog of everything that I used, the patterns that I used, like just everything. So yeah, check that out if you want most of your questions answered. So this is what I've got after a long night of cutting the pattern. So working with the Rose Cafe dress pattern, I drafted the back of the skirt with a tail. That's what this is, that little like mermaid tail thing going on. And this is the front part of the skirt that doesn't have a tail. And I've marked like all my dart lines, all the major parts of the pattern. And this part I cut on a center fold because this is the front, but I do want to have a slit running on the left, I think left, on the left side of the dress. So I'm going to be splitting this part, well this left section of the skirt from the dart line all the way to the end. It's just so that I can cut those as separate pieces that I will then join together but only up to this point and then the rest of the skirt will be open in front. I hope this made um, a lick of sense. I just wanted to explain the thought process to you before I started um, cutting the front part of the skirt where the slit is going to be. So that way when I transfer my pieces to fabric, what I do makes sense. I'm trying, just trying to keep you in the loop. But yeah, I'll show you what I mean in a second.
So a quick tip that I wanted to add is when you're working with lace fabric or something that is like heavily beaded, I learned that it is better to cut on the flip side. Like if you're, when you're cutting the fabric, cut onto like the flip side. So that way you don't, like your scissors don't cut like on top of the embroidered and the sequin part of the lace. So just so you don't ruin, you don't ruin your scissors. And it also, you know, saves a lot of time, makes the cutting a lot easier. So just something to keep in mind. So now that I've cut out the bottom part of my dress onto like the main lace fabric, I'm going to be cutting the lining. So I'm going to be double lining this dress and I'm lining the top with this silk charmeuse fabric that I got and is very pretty so that is what is going to be on the other side of the fabric but this isn't the main lining this is like main fabric itself that I'm using as lining and what I'm going to be doing is I'll be treating this fabric as the main fabric so everything I do to the main lace fabric I will do to this fabric and then I will line it with the actual underlining lining fabric which is what this is so this is the lining fabric that goes underneath this main lining fabric we're basically assuming this two put together are one fabric they are like the top part of the dress and this is the lining and I tried to get a lining fabric that was close enough like in the same color family as the underlying fabric but was different enough for me to be able to distinguish when I'm sewing so this is oh, I've forgotten what kind of fabric this is but this is a silk charmeuse fabric I'll put a link to all of this in my blog post with the description of everything that I'm using just so it's not confusing so I'm going to go ahead and cut out um, front pieces of this part and two pieces of the back part mirror images because there are two of this the left and the right side so I'm going to be cutting this in the same way and like I said everything I do to the top lace fabric I'm going to be doing to the underlining fabric which means like I'm going to be sewing the darts as one I'm going to be top stitching and then attach this to the lining lining the second layer Okay, so I have all the parts cut out for the top. This is the full corset piece. I followed the exact instructions that came with the pattern and I had tested this pattern before, so I would advise that you do that first to make sure that you're actually working with the right size, right bust measurement. So I've cut out all my pieces. This is the main lace piece and that's the lining underneath that is still going to be lined with the second lining fabric. But yes, I'm going to join these pieces together. Nothing's growing where your 
hot as fire but baby i bet you're cold without me even when it's 90 degrees without me i bet that you can get it asleep in the bed lying California. The sun is always shining right. And these are the skirt pieces arranged all over my sofa. So I'm going to do all the sewing. Now join all these pieces together, sew my dart, and then start putting the top part and the bottom part together. You see how this dress is actually coming along. I am quite nervous because I just always have this feeling that I may have missed something, something going to go wrong, but I have pushed this enough now to get this done this night before I go to bed. So yeah, down to the sewing. <laughs> 